Thank you, Laura, for your amazing show here. We're in the Amy H. Carberry uh, Gallery. Uh, it is fall of 2022. And your show is the first like return to something resembling normal here in this yeah. in this in this uh, in this space. So I first want to thank you um, because I know it's been a long journey. Uh, you and I, we've been I don't know how how long our emails <laughs> have been going back. It's been they go back a ways. And so I appreciate your patience. Thank you. And I am so thrilled that you're sharing this work with the Greater Springfield community. Um, I do want to start with early influences because I am always con constantly fascinated with when people thought they might want to be an artist. So if you could say, you know, say a little bit about an early influence, like maybe when you thought you wanted to be an artist. Um, so I, I don't think I have a lot of early influences. Mm -hmm. I know you had mentioned family, but I don't think I have a lot of family influences. I do remember taking a ceramics class somewhere in high school and mm -hmm. enjoying it, but it wasn't until I got to college mm -hmm. that I found myself in the art department. Yeah. So, so you went to Leslie College, now Leslie so University. So no, that's where I got my master's. So oh, okay. My bachelor's, okay. I got a bachelor of fine arts in Tennessee. Okay. So. All right. So. You started out, though, as a ceramicist. I did. Yeah. Yeah. What drew you to ceramics? Um, I absolutely love ceramics. So mm -hmm. when I was getting my bachelor's, I thought at first, um, I thought at first I was going to be a photographer. Mm -hmm. And then um, someone tried to convince me that I should go into art education, and I didn't want to do that. And then I was in a sculpture program and then I was in ceramics. And as soon as I started working with clay, I fell in love, so. Yeah. Um, what do you think the experience of, of taking art classes had on you? Like, what was the importance? Because you could, you could be into ceramics and not go to school, right? Yeah. But you, you were in college when it sounds like in the, those formative like art experiences were when those experiences were happening. So, was that an important part of the development? Was being in college classes and having that rigorous critique or like, what was your experience like when you were in, in class? Um, oh, I feel a little stumped on this question. Oh. I mean, I, I, I feel like, you know, when I got into class, people had a lot more experience than me because mm -hmm. maybe they had high school you know, art or did summer classes or their mm. parents sent them here or there. And for me, it was, I was jumping in as a, as a newbie. Yeah. So. yeah. And you haven't stopped. I haven't stopped. Right. Well, but this <laughs> is interesting because, you know, we're talking about like this formative experience yeah. in our, in college as a ceramicist, yeah. but we are sitting in a, a show of paintings. Yeah. So what happened between doing work in ceramics for all those years, because it wasn't just a short time, yeah. right? I mean, it was a years, yeah. right? At, when did you sort of make that leap to painting? And, and, and specifically, like, some of the work that we're seeing in this space. I think I was painting in grad school mm. on the side. <laughs> um, for me, I've always struggled with my ceramics because I really like big vessels. I love <laughs> Peter Volkus. Was this Greek little guy, uh -huh. and he did these. Are you familiar no, with him? No, huge, no. Huge. Tell me. I mean, huge, <laughs> hand-built vessels, uh -huh. and um, I loved them, and uh -huh. they were very expressive. So, I was not drawn to pottery. I did not want to do um, tableware. I wanted to do art, but out of clay. Yeah, big. Big. Art. I wanted to do big art. So I did. I did a lot of hand building. Mm -hmm. But for me, I was so frustrated by glazing mm. um, and the outcome of clay. I really loved clay when it's soft or leather hard because mm -hmm. it's so tactile. And for me, as soon as, as soon as it's fired in a bisque, I lose interest. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm done with that. So it's really process Yeah, driven. it is process. Yeah, and the Everything labor of about it yeah. is process for okay. me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the pandemic happens. Yeah. What impact did the pandemic have on this body of work specifically? So this was all during the pandemic, all this work. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I, you know, 
I have a studio at Cottage Street in East Hampton, and we were not supposed to be in the building, but I was in that building every <laughs> single day. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And it was quiet, and mm -hmm. it was creepy, and I had a hard time at first, mm -hmm. and, but I showed up every day. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's all about showing up, mm -hmm. and I just got to work. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's what I did. Yeah, I every in. day. Every day. Do you still do that? I still do that. Yeah. I still go to the studio every day. And how do you motivate yourself to do that? Like, I mean, I'm in awe. I think that's amazing. Like, I, I can't do the same thing every day. Yeah. I, I need variety. I need, but how do, you, how do you motivate yourself? How do you, how do you stick to it? Even when you're maybe having trouble in the studio or work isn't working out, how do you stay motivated? So I think that's harder for me now because mm. I'm struggling with my work. Mm. Um, but just showing up. And mm. some days I don't do anything. I'll be honest. I'm sitting in the studio and I might be just, you know, wandering, mm -hmm. you know, doing laps in the studio or pacing, <laughs> looking at my work, drawing or not doing anything. Mm -hmm. But I'm there and I'm yeah. in the space. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, I was amazed. I mean, uh, so I went to your studio last fall. It was last fall. Um, was with, that before I had moved to the other studio? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. yeah, yeah. I was in the space. Yeah. And I go in, and it was like wall-to-wall -wall art, <laughs> and there was the, a huge stack of, of, of canvases on the floor, yeah. like I, I, like a foot deep, yeah. and paint all over, and and it was just it was really amazing because it was like very clear this is the only thing that happens in this space, right? Yeah. Um, but I really appreciated seeing, you know, because it's just a little insight, right, into like. Well, this is where it happens, right. right? And these are really, really large canvases. We've never had a show cover this much wall space <laughs> ever. Okay, so you, you take the award for most coverage, most, most wall coverage. I'll take it. Um, but, but I just wonder, like, so does the space sometimes dictate how big you go? Do you want to be even larger? Or is this really, like, the max for you? So I'm in a bigger space, mm -hmm. but... Um, Anything over eight feet is mm -hmm. too big for me, maybe even seven feet at this point, mm -hmm. um, because I just can't handle that size painting, especially <laughs> when I want to, you know, flip it, the angle of it, yeah. and work on it, unless yeah. I go and knock on the door and get someone to help. Yeah. So they're just too big, so yeah. I've started painting a little smaller. Okay. As you can see. A little smaller. A little well, tiny. in this show, the show that's up right now, Abstracted, it, the, I think the smallest one is like 51 inches by 51 inches, and, the, and then the range is up to like 76 inches yep. by 76 inches. And I know we were concerned about like how to fit it through the doorway and everything, so there were... <laughs> We, I remember just being aware, acutely aware of like the size was going to be a potential. <laughs> Me too. I'm like, am I going to be able to get my paintings through that door? Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about abstraction, right? What does it mean to you to have an ab like an abstract image versus representation, where like you know a flower looks like a flower or a person looks like a person, you know, like. What drew you to creating abstract painting? I've always loved abstract art. Mm -hmm. I mean, going back to the Expressionism mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, the Germans and mm -hmm. American abstract art. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I, I've always been drawn to abstract art. Mm -hmm. Never, never realism. Never. Never. Wow. Nope. <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's that not a, there's no judgment here. There's no judgment. No, uh, but I, 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 I appreciate all forms of art. Yeah. But I definitely there's. I'm sure you've done this. Uh, uh, you know, when you go to MoMA, yeah. And there's the those enormous Jackson Pollocks. Yeah. You know that are like a whole. You know, uh, wall yeah. is just a Jackson Pollock painting, and it it's it's kind of incredible that like he created this painting on the floor, yeah. right? Do you paint on the floor, on the wall? Both, I paint some of on both? the wall. Um, I've had people suggest to me that I should <laughs> paint on the floor, but I love to paint on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's very physical painting. Mm -hmm. I like to walk around the room. Mm -hmm. I like to get a lot of perspective. And when I'm on the floor, you know, I want my arm. My arms and <laughs> legs are always moving, mm -hmm. so I like to attack the wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So one of the things that you had mentioned is that that did shift during the pandemic was like how you put that paint on. Yep. Right. Can you can you talk a little bit about that shift? 
So my work has shifted so much. I was doing more kind of literal figures. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't even know why I was doing them and <laughs> where my work was going, but I just was like trusting the process and trying mm -hmm. to get to the other side. Mm -hmm. Did I answer? I wasn't sure what your question was. No, 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 but, but like, like how do you apply that paint now versus, versus before the pandemic? Because you had mentioned like, having all this time, yeah. dedicated time, you're there at 8 a.m., yeah. you, know, uh, you know, ready to go, that you, you were applying the paint differently or that the way that you were putting the paint on, I mean, because they are so big, yeah. like, how do you make such bold, big marks on the canvas? So I've never used a brush in my life until, <laughs> until like recently. These are all done with plastic palette mm. scrapers mm -hmm. or anything from the hardware store that a mason would use mm. um, oh, wow. and also I started using rollers uh, printmaking rollers mostly these were done with um, you know big big knives mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that's the way I, I, I like to do it mm -hmm. and the rollers I like using the rollers mm -hmm. so I was experimenting with um, uh, some of these paintings have a lot of turpentine, so I was mm. watering, not watering them down, but thinning them out, and yeah. that's what gives the drips. Right. So right. I was applying rollers and knives. That's great. Anything I could get my hands yeah. on, really. Right, right. Well, I mean, it, because it matters, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, when a visitor comes into this space, they're going to see these layers. Yeah. I mean, some of them are layered more than others, but, right? And some of them have more more variety of colors than others. Um, but that there's layer upon layer upon layer. Do you ever have, I mean, have you ever had this in your artistic career, um, a work that just pff, failed in your eyes or just didn't work or something that you like, you just wanted to throw away? Oh, sure, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just stick it in that pile in the middle of the room and I'm like, I'll get back to that painting. So what do you, but what happens to that work? What, what happens to the, like, the, this, the discard pile? Do you, do you ever revisit those? Some, do sometimes I do. Really? Some of my older work I have revisited okay. and um, worked from those paintings or reworked them or added different elements. Okay. So, yes. okay. so they're never truly trashed, though. You're not like, no. throw, you're not doing like a bonfire like in, the, in the yard or something. I'm not like chucking them out the window. Okay, no. okay, okay. Because, you know, there's some artists who do like a clean slate. They're like burning stuff in the backyard. Yeah, and, no. and there's other art, other artists who like put stuff aside and then they like, they revisit it two years later and they're like, oh, oh, what, what is this? And I didn't know I did this. And then they add something completely yeah. different to it because they're in a different place. And then it's, it's successful in their eyes. So. I don't do it very often, mm -hmm. but, you know, mm -hmm. once in a while I do, but that's not yeah. usually my style. Yeah. Well, so that kind of leads me to, like, what do you think is going to be next in, in, in your artistic career, so in, in, in your work? My work has already changed so much mm. because I'm using a paintbrush. Yes. Yeah. And as I've said, I've never used a paintbrush yeah. in, yeah. you know. In 20 years, I never used the I've never used the paintbrush. Right. So you're in a bigger studio. I'm in a bigger studio with a paintbrush. With paintbrushes. Okay. And I'm in a different place with approaching mm. the art with a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think this also we should note this too. Um, you're teaching. Yeah. K through five. Yeah. But I just started. And yeah. you just started, right? Yeah. But do you think that's going to have an impact? on the stuff that you create outside of school or you know how might that impact your work if it does if, if, if at all I don't, I don't really know yeah i'm okay. not sure okay i don't know yeah well we'll stay tuned yeah right yeah but i, I find it fascinating that that you are going going back and you you had mentioned earlier you know you didn't want to do the art education yeah. track or yeah. whatever um but that here you here you are, yeah. you know, you're 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 embarking on this totally new endeavor, right? right? Like teaching K through five, and the excitement that students, art students at that age, you know, because everybody, you know, is an artist, right. right? And I don't know at what point do we decide that oh, I can't draw or I can't paint, or right. and, and some of us decide we we're still going to do it even if we can't, yeah. uh, even if we shouldn't, but. Um, I think but, I always wanted to teach, mm -hmm. but I didn't mm -hmm. want to teach coming out of school. Mm. Um, I know I've done things backwards because <laughs> I've done my own art for like 20 years. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I really jumped into teaching because of the pandemic, mm -hmm. because there were so many jobs available mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. art, and mm -hmm. I could choose mm -hmm. yeah. from 
job to job. Yeah, so. yeah. I think it's exciting. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for yeah, it. Yeah, me too. You know, I'm really I'm excited. I'm really excited. Thank you. Um, so do you feel optimistic? Oh, I mean, always. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I mean, I, that's something I feel like I've gotten from getting to know your work and getting to know you is that you do seem to be optimistic even when things are not going great. Yes. You always seem to have a sense of like it's going to be fine. I'm, Things I are going to work out. I, I live. I admire that. I'm like you know. Yeah. Well, so this brings me up to uh, you know uh, inspiration. Okay. Um, what what do you wish you knew as a younger art student in college or or maybe after college? You know, like like was there something that you you would advise you know a younger student? And not not K through five, but <laughs> but you know, like our six students, you know, yeah, who, yeah. who you know, rate, there's a wide range of yeah. ages, obviously, but you know, adult students, you know, who some of whom are starting out, some of whom are coming back to school yeah. after being absent for a long time, but someone who you know really loves art and and wants to major in fine arts, what would you what would you say you know they they should do? You know, I am terrible at advising people, but I think as long as one, you know, for me, I just had such passion about art mm -hmm. and I knew I wanted to do it once once I figured out I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I feel like everyone has to, you know, get to the other side. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't know, I don't know where I fit in as far as you know, helping people along that mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. Well, I want you to know you are helping people along that path <laughs> by sharing this work. I mean, you know, like yeah. like you're not doing it in a in, in, in maybe the way that you would think. Like, well, I'm going to tell you and this is my advice. But but you know, you're demonstrating, right? You know, in in your in your action in in you know in this recording of your motion across the canvas. Um, you know, you're showing people. Yeah. You know. it, well, it's important to me. I want to see my work on the walls, yeah. and that's really important to me. Yeah. Well, what was it like when you came into this space and saw them all? Oh, it was on fantastic. I'm just so excited to see all this work on the walls. I think it looks great. Well, I'm because we've been, we, you know, you talk about working in isolation. Yeah. You know, you're the only one in Cottage Street. Yeah. You snuck in the back door. Yeah. Um, and, and no one's seen it. And this. no one's I mean, seen it. Yeah. You know, my stuff's yeah. sitting in piles. So for me. Yeah. You know, I don't have a clean wall. I don't know what a clean wall is. So yeah, yeah. when I see something on a clean wall and I can get perspective in a different way, I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I think it's great. Again, I can't thank you enough for, for sharing this work, for sharing the process. And I hope that people are able to come to the gallery and, and take in the work in person. Yep. Um, because I think work this large needs to be seen in person yep. and that you know seeing the work on a website is just a little right it's just a little yeah, fun a little so, snippet yep. a little snippet so <laughs> i really hope that people are able to come Me in person um, but if they're not you know the images are available you know online but there's there, nothing really replaces standing in front of, of, of a work of art so, yep. so thank you for your work thank you for this conversation Thank and you so I much. look for it. You're welcome. And I look forward to seeing what what comes down the pipe yeah, in in, yeah. Your, in your next show. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome.